dark, light, dark. You know, if it doesn't have dark mode, it isn't a real cybersecurity tool, right? There is so much chatter about the dark web, the deep web, about how scary it is. And you know, what really matters is that you monitor it and you know how to monitor it. And the sponsor of today's video, Flare, have kindly given me access to their entire platform. I put my domains and identifiers into Flare and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to monitor and manage the things that you see on the deep and dark web. Let's go. So this is Flare. This is what the dashboard looks like whenever you get access to the tool. There's a little bit of setup to do and I mean a little bit. You come in here, you click on tenants and you add a new tenant. If you're familiar with tenants from the Microsoft 365 stuff, this will be familiar, but basically you're given it the top level domain for your organization. You can then come into the identifiers panel and add in more identifiers. So I've got switchfire.co, I've got garyrodell.com, I've got my name, I've got my wife's name, and I've got my email address, all being looked for in Flare's data. And you can see I'm using 11 out of 5,000 identifiers. So if you're a bigger company with, you know, hundreds and thousands of employees, you can add all those in here, no problem. So let's go back to the dashboard. And this is our exposure profile. So in purple, we have the tenant that we created, the switchfire.co one, that's our exposure compared to global industry. If we click on insights, this is really useful. This is one of my favorite pages within the whole thing. Over here, we can see significant high activity GitHub users and repositories. So these are accounts that are publishing content on GitHub that talks about me or any of the identifiers you saw in the identifiers panel. It's nice just being able to go there and get some very quick insights. If we look at the footprint, you can see here we've got a score and it breaks it down by different categories, attack surface, source code, criminal underground, leaked credentials and sensitive data. And if we look at history, this is nice because you get to see your trend over time. Security in theory should get better over time. If it's getting worse, it could be because you just acquired a big company and you've now absorbed all of their accounts into your world and that's a whole new world of pain. Or maybe you're not really doing very well in data loss prevention and secrets management and that's why you're leaking data all over the place. This will show the trend. So, you know, I only got set up recently on Flare, but we're already trending down slightly, which is good. So here's the events tab. And these are the events to do with our tenant. We can change it to global, which shows us all of the data the Flare is collecting, and I mean all of it, you can look through all of it. Deep and dark web forums, chat rooms, all these things, it's all in here and we'll get to that in a minute. But I just wanna look at my tenant, the switchfire.co tenant. You get these prioritization things up here, these little colored dots, the severity. Usually what you do is you start off with the really high risk stuff, there's none, great. Let's expand a little bit, let's go to high. And as you can see, there's two things here to deal with because they're leaked credentials. And you can see, if I click on this, on the right it says 2019 Canva. Canva, the graphic design type website, it's free. They had a data breach, leaked credentials everywhere. So this is from that. I know I've changed that password since then, but if I didn't, I could deal with it. What we can do here is we can just select both of these events and mark them as remediated. So I'm happy those are done. Let's expand the search even further just to cover everything. And here we go. So this is someone just putting uh, how to pass the OSCP first time, including my video inside one of their GitHub projects. If we click on this, you get the link here to the project. If I click that, it actually opens it. And then if we do a search for Gary Riddell, here we go, it shows us. So on line 95 of their little career file that they have, they've referenced my article about how to pass the OSCP first time. Thank you for including that. So that's all that is. I'm happy that's sort of a, it's not a false positive. It is a real mention of me in that place, but I'm not worried about it, so it's fine. We can come in here and we can either ignore it or mark it as remediated. I'm gonna ignore it. So there we go because remediated is for things that are real, okay? Let's scroll down the page here. 
lookalike domain, GaryRiddell.com. So it's looking for domains that look like my domain. That's how phishing works. Whenever you get a email from Netflix.com, but actually the I is a one, that's a lookalike domain because it looks like Netflix at a glance, but it isn't Netflix. So this was first seen on January 29th, 2024. Pretty fresh. Okay, you can see the title of the page has changed, the favicon, the favorites icon has changed. They've done some screenshots and things. Let's just go check this out because the URL was rejected. Please consult your administrator. I don't know, that could just be text that's manually typed on there. But if I pull this down a little bit, you can see the domain is coldwellbankerhomes.com. So that's quite interesting. Maybe someone's trying to send some phishing emails as garyriddell.com. But that's interesting. I don't have to worry about it too much. So we could take it down. We could request a takedown. I'll click that button and click OK. Flare is now dealing with registrars to get that domain taken down. Pretty cool. Let's move on. Here we go. Zeta2 on GitHub has included me in their file. So there's this website that I'm on. It's very surreal for me because I'm near IPsec OXDF. It's just crazy. But it's managed by Zeta2. This is the GitHub repo for that. If we go on here and we do a search, you can see there is my entry on here, links to my LinkedIn and Twitter and things like that. And if we come back up to the main page, scroll down a little bit, you can see here it is. So it's a list of cybersecurity content creators. Everybody's on here. John Hammond, Tiberius, Ipsec, Heath Adams, me, Hacklook, Simply Cyber, Stock. It's really weird seeing my face on this page with all these legends, to be honest. <laughs> so that's that, happy with that. We can mark that as ignore. That's that dealt with. And if we come down here, this one's interesting. It's a Telegram channel, let's click on this. It looks to be largely harmless, but I can't read Russian. So let's just click the content and we can translate it like that. And as you can see, it says solving a real investigation using OSINT. So it's just a post about my real OSINT case video, link in the description if you wanna go check that out. That's all it is, again, harmless. But it translates from languages into English, it's fantastic. And if you click on AI Assist, this is a really cool feature. It gives you a summary of what's going on and then all the details and all the remediation guidance. It's so useful, like it's incredible. And that's it. Now it's really a case of getting to inbox zero. You know, you ideally want this panel here to just be empty. Everything's dealt with. And then when new alerts are generated, you get an email or you get a Slack alert, whatever way you've got it set up and off you go, you deal with that one. It couldn't be easier than this. What I love about Flare is there are so few buttons on that left-hand panel. A lot of security tools you'll come across have lots of buttons. This one is just really well designed. It's got the analyst in mind so you can just get the job done. Let's switch over to the scatter hold demo for a minute. I click this button, scatter hold demo. I don't really have a very big footprint online. As you saw, there's more data in this demo. If we go to the dashboard, again, you get the usual things here. If we look at the history, you get this nice rich history. The footprint, again, it breaks it down. Insights, for me, it said about GitHub leaks. As you can see here, it's talking about identical passwords leaked in multiple databases. This insights page really is dynamic and custom to your footprint on the web. And here, this is great, you know, we can see that Patrick Clark is using the password Hunter81. Eliza Owen is using Hunter82. So we can now go and tell them to use the password manager that we gave them and generate strong passwords. So those are the big day-to-day -day use cases for this tool. Get the alerts, deal with the alerts, right? Like most cybersecurity tools. But there's a whole intelligence element to this tool that I wanna show you here quickly. And it's where you can go and hunt and learn about what's going on in the world. So let's check it out. Let's switch back over into my actual environment because the demo version doesn't have that data set. Here we are in the real tool. We're gonna to click on events. We're gonna to go to global. I'm gonna set the date range to last year. 
let's just say, 1st of July to the end of September. Why am I doing that? Because I don't want to show you real live things on here. You're going to see ransomware victims being named and shamed. You're going to see real threat actor names. We don't want to show any of that stuff. So let's just look at the old stuff. And we want to filter by illicit networks. And I'm really interested in ransom leaks. Here we go. And I'm interested in Lockbit. Here they are. All of the Lockbit incidents from that time period last year. You want to click into one of these? There's the onion link to the exact post on the Tor network. If we click content, we get an extract from the post. So if you're the type of person who needs to track ransomware attacks, this is a great tool for it. If we jump across to collection, you can see here all of the things collected. If we expand all of these. So these are all the auto shops, the illicit forums. Look how many there are. There's just so many forums. Like you would think you just need one forum called Evil Forum and everybody talks in it, but they don't. They have forums for everything on here. It's nuts. Illicit marketplaces, open web. So all the GitHub showdown stuff that's just out on the normal internet. Paste sites. Look, they're tracking 55 ransom blogs. It's mad. And you know, if we click on this, we click on the Lockbit one, we just did that search for Lockbit a minute ago. This is the other way of getting to that data. So we've looked at demo data and we've looked at real data. And as you can see, Flare really works. It makes it so easy to get your hands around your own attack surface and manage it. There's a link down in the description if you want to go try Flare for free, go check it out. Thank you Flare for your support and for sponsoring the channel. I'll see you in the next one.